Hello, everybody. Welcome in. I'm so glad that you could join me today. So this is slightly different than what I normally do. I'm not going to officially do an unboxing because I kind of peeked inside of this to see what I had going on. I didn't see everything, so there will be some surprises along the way. I just wanted to thank all of my new subscribers and thank you to all my past subscribers. You know, you're the reason why I do this. And I'm so happy that so many people have found me. Please continue to like and share out my videos. I so appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, so thank you so much to my past friends and my old friends and my new friends. Thank you so much for being here. You really encourage me. On to this. So I got three phone calls over the last four days, and I already processed two boxes and a very small Ziploc bag. And I thought before I processed this and got it ready for sale, I would do kind of an unboxing. So you see the way things come into me and then you'll understand how I acquire some of my treasures and how I acquire some of the things I might decide to keep. And then also this video will be on basically things that I'm going to clean, process, inventory, and then get ready for resale. I do have an antique show coming up this weekend, and I'm super excited about it. But before I forget, this ring came in from three, let's see here. No, three months? No, yeah, three months ago. It's just been sitting on my desk. But I got a call from a scrapper, from someone who deals in scrap, and they sold me this. I was so excited to get this. They didn't know that the glass inset in this, this iridescent glass beetle, is in fact Tiffany glass, and it is an original scarab beetle art glass. I think they made this in three sizes. I know for a fact they made it in two sizes. They made it a size smaller than this, and then I think they made this size, and then they made one much larger than this. Anyways, this is incredible. Look at that art glass, and then look at the mounting. Now, the mounting appears to be a spoon, the handle of a spoon, from the Art Nouveau time period. So that is an older Art Nouveau spoon, from what I can tell. I don't think that it's a recast, because look at the detail in those flowers. You can see that real fine detail of those, um, the pistols and the stamens on the inside of those beautiful naturalistic flowers. They remind me of poppy flowers. And then on this other side, this haunting image of an Art Nouveau woman with incredible flowing hair, beautiful face, natural wear to the face. So this has been around a while. Now, this, this um, glass piece is from right around the turn of the century, 1900s, and um, incredible. Now, that size normally sells between $200 and $300 just for the glass beetle. So I was delighted. I only spent 30 I think it was $32 or $38. And once again, sometimes I lose track of specifics, so you'll have to forgive me on that. But look at the way this looks when it's on. What an incredible, incredible ring. Look at that. It's just magic. So I was so excited to get that. And I had forgotten to put it in one of my videos. So when my phone rings, I answer. And this is a testament to why I answer my phone when it rings, and it's other dealers or other sellers that have, quote, things for me to see. And I've been doing this for so long that they definitely call because they know I like the unusual, and I like anything artistic. I could talk about that ring forever. All right, on to the box. So just really quick, and I, I don't want to spend long on this, but let me zoom in a little bit more. And thank you again so much for joining me. So this rhinestone necklace, I had already kind of looked at this. What I love about this. I loved the um, the drapiness, how it's like a festoon. I'm trying to find my bust to show you how this lays down on the neck. <laughs> I'm so messy in these videos sometimes because I get so excited to come on and I don't plan everything out. But I loved how that is so festoon-like and so feminine and so beautiful. All the stones are there. I would say it's from the late 70s 
late 70s, early 80s on that construction, and probably more 70s than 80s. But I loved how beautiful and elegant that is. So that was great. And again, costume, and I think they thought it was silver just because the color of the metal being so silver and uh, kind of that oxidation on it. So I think they may have thought it was sterling, but that was um, in this box. And I thought, boy, that's really cool. So I'll process that and get that ready for the show. And again, thank you so, so much for being here. Why I left this in, this is really cool. So this is the sterling silver top of a brush. So it would have had a brush set in here. But why I left this in is some people ask me how things are constructed. Now check this out. Look how cool this is. So you might say, oh, that's terrible. No, it's not. So this is pitch, P-I-T-C-H. It's in, um, I guess you could say the, the uh, uh, tree sap family or the pine resin family. And um, this was die formed, so repousade and chased, and to prevent dents like this, they filled this with this pitch. So you normally don't see the inside of the repousade pieces, but what was great about this is now I can weigh this and get an accurate weight so when I see this again, I'll know what the, the scrap or the intrinsic value of the sterling is. Let me set that down. And let me look on the edge here and show you that this is sterling. Uh, check the edges very, very closely on these. Some are silver plate. I've seen many that are, are silver plated. There is the sterling mark right there. There's the maker's mark. There's the sterling mark. There's the model number. And then right here it says 925 over 1,000. So it's 925 with a line and then 1,000 underneath that. And that means that it's 925 parts per thousand, which is sterling. Fancy monogram in the center, which is normal because people, wealthy people back in the day, wanted people to know who owned these pieces and put their name on them. And look at how that fits in there. So now you can see underneath the silver things that are weighted or, quote, reinforced. So when you see the bottom of candlesticks and it says sterling weighted, or sterling reinforced, know that it's a thin, a very thin piece of almost foil sometimes, but it's a thin piece of silver. So it's not solid silver. So don't pay sterling silver prices for weighted pieces because you're buying this, which is is just a, a tree sap that is then put in from behind to reinforce this metal to prevent wear. So look at that. Anyways, I thought that was really cool. Sorry for, for taking up so much of the time on that, but I thought that was very interesting and very cool to see. We'll set that out of the way. And then I'm not going to get through all of this, but just some quick, quick things to take a look at. Lucite orchid, pendant, very cool. Uh, sterling silver thimble, thimble, very interesting design on that. Uh, should be signed way down in. I'm sure it is. And of course, my phone does not want to focus today. Uh, let's see here. It should be signed down in there somewhere. And if not, it might be signed on the outside. But we'll take a closer look at that and make sure we're sterling. 99.99. Oh, yeah, 99% sure we're sterling. Yeah, it's signed down in there. I just can't get it in the... Uh, uh, let's see here. Let's see if it's Simon's. No, I can't. I can't. I can't focus on that. All right. Spend enough time on that. <laughs> Getting frustrated. Some of these things I hadn't seen. This one, uh, genuine opal, but looks like the gold is plated. Yes, it's uh, gold plated. Very, very nice ring, though. Very beautiful opals. Natural opals. Very pretty. And uh, this is such the mishmash. This is really cool. I think I remember seeing this one in there. Sterling silver, adjustable. And uh, there's some of the marks, but isn't that cool? Very interesting. Synthetic stone, I'm sure, probably in the synthetic corundum, synthetic ruby family. We'll take a look at that closer. Ooh, this is cool. Chinese, um, Chinese export, gold-plated sterling, and coral, turquoise, and enamel. But beautiful, because I've seen a lot of these, but I really like the style of this one. That's definitely everyday wear, and that's an easy sell. That's something that would definitely go very, very quickly at my show. So that's exciting. And again, I don't know exactly where some of the things were. Oh, this is neat. Mother of Pearl. And uh, this one's Navajo, sterling silver. Beautifully executed, beautifully done. And I like that it's not too long. Some of these get so incredibly, incredibly long. 
And this one's moderate in terms of its length. Very, very, very pretty. Very well crafted. There's that. Anyways, thank you again so much for the treasure hunt today. Those are sterling. Don't really need to talk about them. Don't know what that is. I'm way out of the frame already. Oh, this one is Art Nouveau, and it had things on it, and you can see that this one's plated. So I did cover that in my Art Nouveau video the other day. This is an original. It doesn't have the backing, and then you can see all of the wear. You can see all the wear, and apparently this had three drops that are now missing. And I'd imagine that maybe they were just naturalistic elements of like... I would guess maybe moon and stars or some sort of natural element, but really beautiful. Very, very well detailed. I really like her, though. So she'll still sell, even though she's got so much wear. This um, sterling silver puffy heart bracelet with rose quartz. Again, does it change, you know, history, or is it historically important? No, but it sure is fashionable and fun. <laughs> it just shows that when I buy for resale, I kind of don't really, again, I don't stop at anything. Oh, that's beautiful. We'll get to that in a minute. I don't remember this one, but looks 40s. Let's see here. Sterling. That's a good thing. Sterling crown pin. Again, you know, I'll put that out at 25 or 35 and it will go for 25. So that's great. That's a moneymaker because again, when I go per piece, when I buy like this, oh, this is Victorian. I didn't see this one before and that might be gold. Uh, I'm going to have to, oh wait, let's take a quick peek. I'm going to get my loop out real quick. Hold on and take a quick peek. Oh, sweet. Uh, let's see here. Yep, 14 karat. What do you know? And I want you to look at this. So how I thought it was gold, I knew that that was a little diamond. And most of the time they don't set diamonds in gold, although I do have uh, gold filled, I should say. I do have diamonds. I have a diamond bracelet that was set in gold filled. So I've always slowed down. But you can tell by the color of the metal and that enameling, that fired on glass enamel. Yes, there's damage there. Yes, there's a little damage here and there. There's more damage there that can be restored. It's not cost effective. But when you look at that close, let me zoom in on that. It is not zooming in. It does not, oop, it does not want to focus. There we go, right there, 1, 4K, and then the maker's mark up there, which I'm not familiar with. But you can see that it's oxidized so drastically, so be careful and glow, go slow when you look at such things. I almost would have thought that that was gold filled. So it's 14 karat and a love knot, Victorian, 18, hmm, 1880. Yeah. 1870, 1880 on that one. So that's it just in metal alone, probably 160, I'm guessing 160, but yeah, that's beautiful. So there you go. A piece of gold mixed in with, um, they probably thought it was gold filled. This is very cool. I remembered um, taking a peek at this enamel, modernist, very, very reminiscent of an abstract eye and really neat. Just very, very different. And I like that you could wear it that way or you could wear it that way. I like that pin. Sterling silver, again, not signed, but you can tell by the oxidation pattern that it's sterling. Look at the edges. Look for wear. You don't see a secondary metal coming through there. So again, I'm just trying to give you visual information. And some people say, well, I can't tell by solder seams if it's silver or if it's not. You will get better with time. I don't know exactly how to put it into words sometimes, but I know by the finish of this and the oxidation that that, in fact, would be sterling. But that's me. That's my eye over the last 30 years of, of looking at such pieces and um, becoming more familiar with the metal. I wish I could put it into better words sometimes. And I appreciate you just looking. This is... Um, <laughs> I don't want to be mean, but this is junk metal. <laughs> this is totally trash. But that's butterfly wing underneath. Uh, those are actually, yeah, those are glass. Uh, those are actually glass covers. But isn't that beautiful for butterfly wing? But again, in like an aluminum metal, not even sterling plate or uh, silver plated, and most certainly not sterling, way, way, way too light. Uh, and very quick tourist trade craft on this. Uh, a surprise, because normally these are made in England. Uh, this one, to me, is not English. This one is definitely not English in origin, and it's not American, I can tell you that. Uh, yeah, but look at the beautifulness of the butterfly wings. Really pretty. But again, that'll sell really quick, and some other people would put it out at 65 75 or so. I'm going to put it out at like 35 and I'm going to blow it out. So I'm so excited about going to the show 
And then um, eventually I was um, contemplating actually doing a few sales on YouTube. And I don't know, you know, that's not what my channel is based on, but I eventually might do that. This one is Mexican and beautiful. It has the pre, uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's the Eagle essay mark. That's awesome. So it's got the Eagle, um, made in Mexico, 925. But I love the abalone in that. And look how sizable. Very, very large. So will I get too carried away and price it high? Nope, I'll price it so it sells. But I love the quality of that abalone. We don't see abalone this kind of quality these days, usually. Usually, that is. But that's a stunner. That's a beautiful thing. And then let's see what else. So as I fumble around, oh, I loved this. I remember this, but the chain, I think, is junk. Uh-oh, we're all tangled. <laughs> Here I go. Uh-oh, we're really tangled. That's all right. I'll untangle this later. But that's my job today is to process all this to get it ready for uh, Friday. So this is definitely Native American made for sure, 100%. And look at that turquoise. Very natural very natural stone and a handmade bezel. Look at the bezel. See how it's not perfect? See how that bezel is 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 not perfect? You can tell it's completely hand sawn out. That's a beauty. So I will take it off of that chain and probably put it on the melon shaped beads. And then I can take a pendant that on this chain would only sell for about $80. I can elevate that to $300. And I could probably get it because that's an early one and people will be in love with that at this show. This is stuck. <laughs> this is stuck. Oh, no, it's stuck on another one. <laughs> so there, I should have sorted this better, but okay. So there's this Mexican fish um, pendant, sterling silver, Mexican. We see these a lot, articulated fish. Let's try and hold on. This is going to drive me nuts. <laughs> uh, let's take, well... I'm, I'm going to try and get this off here quick, but no, it's it's nothing's going to be quick about this. I appreciate you staring at this box of treasures as I <laughs> as I get this untangled. I don't know why everything's so funny all the time, but I think why I laugh is because um, I do think a lot of things that make me crazy are funny just because um, to laugh is better than to cry, right? <laughs> or get frustrated. I don't want to get angry. <sighs> okay. Um, no, it's that's not going to come off. <laughs> well, this is a very cool bracelet, and I'll have to look at this closer and see what kind of charms we have on here. But some very interesting charms. Uh, a little locket, some sterling pieces, another sterling one. The Hershey's Kiss is really cool. That one looks like it could be silver. The little flag is cool. The bracelet itself is Victorian, and then the charms are definitely newer. But look at that. So I got lucky on that one because... Yeah, that yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take that apart and sell the bracelet separate and sell all the charms separately, and then let someone construct their own bracelet. Oh, and you always ask me about my rings. This one is aquamarine and sterling silver. Let me slip it off. This is made by Christina Malcolm. She's a local silversmith who is just a genius. And talk about a beautiful, chunky, massive, awesome. Are you kidding me? She casts the stones in place. So she carves this out of cuddle bone. Uh, I believe it's cuddle bone on this one. And then she textures the, the mold that she uses, a two part cuddle bone, and then puts the stone in, carves that around. And then the metal, she pours the metal in from here. So there's where the sprue system, so it's poured in and gravity pulls this down. And then it grabs the stone and instantly sets it in place just incredible. It's my good luck charm today. I love that ring. And then this other one, you've seen that before and just my sterling band. All right, on back onto this. Um, don't know on this one. That's going to have to be a tester. I don't know, 14 karat probably, uh, and an opal. So I'm going to have to test that one. That one's just costume. Looks really, really good, but just costume. So just plated metal, but in a synthetic stone or glass stone, that's junky junks. This one, same way. Uh, I can already tell by stone, by metal finish. Um, and I just do this really quick because I can just tell on these, uh, nope, it's a nothing. And not, not that it's a nothing, but it's just, uh, you know, I'll have to uh, shore things up. And like I said, I do, uh, well, some of these are really, really bad. I don't even want to waste my time to talk about them. Here's another one of those um, blue uh, rings from earlier with this can of teal wire work. 
uh, the canateal wire work, and then the granulation, and a synthetic stone. But really nicely made. That's that's a very lovely, very nicely nicely constructed ring for sterling silver. Very, very pretty. Um, thank you so much again. I'm so excited to be able to do this. These I've always loved. These are normally 800 silver or sterling silver, and sometimes they're marked. Let me take a quick peek and see. This one, I don't see any markings. Um, no, nope, I don't see any markings. I bet this is in the 800 silver. Uh, let's see if these are soldered. No, these are not soldered. I don't like that. But, no, nope, that's definitely silver, though. But I always look at the way the jump rings are constructed. I always tell you, look close. If the jump rings aren't soldered shut... Mm, you know, it makes me makes me leery, but I can tell by the finish of this one, definitely at least 800 silver, for sure. And the oxidation on that says that it's silver. Sometimes these are plated, but this is definitely silver. I wonder if I can find the mark anywhere else. No, there might be a mark there. My eyes are really gone, plus this phone, this camera is driving me nuts today. <laughs> so, all right, we'll go over that later. And again, thanks for joining me. Uh, let's see if we can find anything else really cool. Oh, this one. Love this one. Love, love, love. Did see this from the bottom of the box. And I think this has a ring or it has a pendant. So carnelian for sure. Absolutely. And then again, this incredible um, wire work. Incredible. And some people say it's canateal. I, I'm not going to start, you know, I'm not going to start going crazy and telling people that they're wrong. Uh, you know how I feel about that. But it's it's beautifully well constructed. And that's sterling or 800. So let's look close at the clasp. Uh, well, can't tell on that. Let's see here if we're marked anywhere. Yeah, the solder seems... Oh, here we go. Uh, what do you know? Uh, sterling. There we go. Sterling silver. So you can tell. You can, Once you start to touch these things more, you can tell. But you can't put something like this together with fusing the little the little beads, the little balls onto the wire work. You can't do that with, with just junk metal. You can't. It, it's impossible. Uh, I know that for a fact because I'm a silversmith, so I already know that. Uh, and it's not arrogant. It's just saying, I already know. <laughs> and you'll get very used to it as time goes on. That's Mexican. Let's take a look as I throw everything else down because, yeah, that's Mexican. I didn't know that was in there. Uh, very, very cool. Totally complete. Be careful on these stones because these are very fragile stones. And is that chipped? No, let me take a look. No, that's not chipped. But a lot of times these show incredible amounts of wear. And according to what I know about these, and again, I don't want to get into the stone on this one just yet, but some people say Jasper, some people say this, some people say that, Jade 8 family, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, I've always known these to be in the um, onyx or in the um, almost so porous to be maybe like in the alabaster family or a green onyx because of the banding. Again, I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'll get into that later, but um, a lot of times this specific stone is misidentified, and a lot of times this is color-treated. Now, people won't go into that because, well, maybe they don't know, but it is color-treated, and a lot of times you'll see it in a green color, and it appears very, very chalky. It appears very like a chalky finish rather than this lustrous polish. So um, I'll get into that in another video. I probably shouldn't even have mentioned it here um, because now I'm going to get attacked. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, let's see. This is glass, but looks like amethyst. But that's glass and very pretty. And I'm going to just kind of brief over the rest of oh, turquoise. That's really pretty. That mounting is very nice. See, look at how much this stuff needs to be cleaned. I mean, it's really dirty. So I've got my work cut out for me uh, to get these things cleaned up. But you know what? That is a very lovely ring. Now that I study it, you know, I, I flipped through it like, oh, that's nothing. No, and that's a great size. That's probably like a size... Eight is my guess, but look at the stone and look at that feather. Very well constructed. Again, Navajo on this one, but really beautiful. Saw, sawtooth border, turquoise, really pretty. Very, very nice. This deco bracelet, that's pretty fantastic. Probably marked Germany, more than likely. We'll do some research on that one eventually. Uh, let's see. I don't see any markings on it, but probably, probably German. Uh, to me, that's definitely German. Oh, here's some markings right up here. Let's take a look with our loop. Uh, let's see here. Oh, beginner's luck. Totally beginner's luck. Um, <laughs> oh no, I just, <laughs> oh no, I just dropped, uh, three things. Let's see here. 
Uh, yeah, sign Germany on the end. <laughs> um, that's so cool. And and thanks again for bearing with me on this video because right there, so Sterling and Germany, right on the tab. Uh, but look at the construction. Once you see these constructions of these things, you'll know. And it's a great size. It's like a seven and a quarter, so that'll fit most people because it's it's really wow. That's a beautiful size. Let's just move that. Oh, here's the pin to the bracelet. So they must have taken a link out of the bracelet. More than likely, they took a link out of the carnelian bracelet. Uh, some mountings, some not so great. Uh, let's see here. This is fun. I wish I was seated, but I'm standing all hunched over. Um, but I wanted to get this video up. <laughs> Sterling Mexican brass. Oh, this. This, this, this. Now, I remember this because they sent me a picture of this. <laughs> And they said, and, you know, I, I wasn't going to say anything, but they sent me a picture of this. And there's another one in here somewhere. They sent me a picture of this and they said, do you want this? And I said, yes, I do. And I got it for free because they only deal with, me like, fine metal. Gold, silver, platinum, diamonds and gemstones. So this, to them, was total junk. Like, throw away. Let's just give it to Jason. So this is Czechoslovakian. Czechoslovakian glass. This stuff is so dirty. I need to clean this stuff really bad. It's really dirty. Look at that. So like a malachite glass, but swirled and iridescent. Look at the fine brass work. Definitely Art Deco. Definitely 1920, 1930. And I would be surprised if it wasn't signed. Now, where did the clasp just go? I just had it two seconds ago. Here we go. Let's take a peek. Is it signed? Nope. Oh, yep, it is. Right there. So sometimes you'll miss this, but look right there on this jump ring. Signed all the way around. And I can't read it, but it probably says made in and then Czechoslovakia. Sometimes it'll say just C-Z-E-C-H-O. Sometimes that's what it'll say. But this one's probably spelled out Czechoslovakia, more than likely. So look at the jump ring where the clasp connects to. A lot of times these give up over time and the springiness is loose. Yeah, this one's kind of tired. So just remember that when you sell those, please just note if they're a little slow with working because people... Uh, buyers get very upset when the clasps don't work. And then if you replace this, then it makes the rest of this look new. And it's not new. This is old. So if you do replace a clasp, let me zoom out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. If you replace a clasp, just let people know that you've replaced it. I love that necklace. And for free, I said, oh, yes, I'll take that. <laughs> so and what's great is the tip isn't chipped. A lot of times there's a lot of chips on these glass. But look how beautiful that is. I love that. Very, very timeless, very beautiful. And here's the other one right here, right in the corner, right in the very, very corner. And this one I don't think was as good. Oh, maybe I take that back. <laughs> maybe it's even better. So it's a short one. So about 14 and a half inches. This one's probably not marked. Let's see here. Oh, well, I take that back. This one is marked. <laughs> uh, so uh, Czechoslovakia. And uh, let's make sure that we don't have any other marks. Let me make sure. And this is my first time looking at the stuff. Yep. So just Czechoslovakia right there on the back of the clasp. But it's a box style clasp. Look at the wear. So they knew that this wasn't silver because the brass is showing through. So silver plated. But look at the original lapis glass chain that kind of comes. Oh, there's a repair right there. But that's okay. We forgive that. Lapis glass chain that comes down to this jeweled fantastic pendant and for deco come on right and for free i should be doing a cartwheel right now these normally and i'll, I'll say these normally are bringing anywhere now between 85 and 165 that's their range they were up a little bit and now they're down again so uh that is i'll probably put that one out at 95 uh, maybe, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Just depends on how I'm feeling, but beautifully done. And I loved the marcasite stones inset in the metal, but I love the shape of this lapis glass stone. And look how they put like gold fleck in it. So it looked more like lapis, more like gemstone. Really beautiful. I love that one. Um, all right. And I guess that probably pretty much sums it up. I don't know what this is. Oh, oh, that's really cool. Uh, I can't read the back of it, but that's a little butterfly underneath glass. Victorian. Really, really beautiful. 
Oh, it looks Victorian. Maybe it's not. Uh, no, that would be that would be original, I would guess. Let's see what it says. W and H company. And then everyone's going to be yelling at my screen. W H is this. W H is that. Okay, I, I I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> and it doesn't much matter because these things, the way they are, sometimes doesn't matter the maker of some of the pieces. I mean, it's great to have the history. Don't get me wrong, but the the maker on this isn't going to inflate the price because it's not gold. Uh, it's gold plated, uh, gold filled. So yeah, beautiful though. I'm going to put that out at like 55, 55 or 65. So I'm going to be getting some, ooh, emerald band. This is really nice. Emerald and sterling silver band. I like it. It's simple. All right. So that's it. I think that's it. I could go through all of these. Oh, there's a bracelet I love. There's more rings that I love. Here's a beautiful charm. There's a whole bunch of like sterling rings and sterling parts. Oh, this amber ring. How could I forget this? Oh, and this coin is cool. Here I go, you know? Here I go, going crazy. Beautiful, beautiful coin in a fantastic old mounting. But again, that has been replaced. The rollover has been replaced. But I love the way they have this set in so you can take the coin out. Really beautiful silver coin in an original Victorian mounting with little cannonball border. I love it. And then this one, amber, genuine amber, and so, so true egg yolk, right? So true, so true egg yolk, and a look at the modernist mounting on that. That is super cool, and I don't know what the price was. Was it $12? Yeah, it was $12 back in the day. <laughs> Unbelievable, and uh, yo, look, the hallmarks are on the outside of the band. I keep telling people, look at the outside of the band. Now I'm getting excited, and I want to stay here for a minute. <laughs> look for hallmarks on the outside of the bands. Don't always look on the inside, because this one is marked on the outside of the band. Two little hallmarks for the silver content. Look how dirty my hands are. <laughs> um, this stuff really needs to be cleaned, but look at that. Boom, right there, silver hallmarks. And I love the construction of this. Look how thick the metal is. The metal is so thick. Look how dirty my hands are. Ugh, oh, I have got to go clean my hands. And I've got to go get packed up for this show. So here you go. So that kind of sums it up. When stuff comes in, it takes me a little while to process it. Um, and I definitely will be processing all of this for the show um, and hopefully getting, oh, this is neat, hopefully getting it all out for the show on time. And again, thank you so much for being here with me. Oh, how did I miss that one? Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate you so much. You know how I end this. I love you so much. Have a great day.